It's your boy, Japanese Tutor, and we're back again. It's been a long time since I've made this kind of video, but we're doing the Dutch defense. We're going back into it, and we're right now in lesson four. We're going to do the seventh move, F4, okay? And hopefully you guys are all good. I've been uh, releasing a lot of... Uh, chess videos and you guys have shown me a lot of support so shout out to you guys thank you for liking the videos and subscribing it really means a lot to me and hopefully i can keep providing great content for you guys my goal is to give you guys about 500 to a thousand hours of content for free online and have playlists dedicated to you guys so um let's get to studying and uh let's do this so i'm going to read right from the text those are my principles and if you don't like them, well, I have others. This is by Mr. Marx. Uh, the seventh move, F4 variation, was the main reason why Botvinnik and his contemporaries preferred to develop their dark squared bishop to E7 rather than to D6. It leads to an immediate sharpening of the struggle, but we shall try to demonstrate that Black should not fear this line if he doesn't mind a sharp tactical battle so we're going to get right into it they give us a line to go to so d4 actually let's look at it from the black point of view f5 knight f3 knight f6 g3 e6 right it's going to be a stone wall like always bishop g2 d5 castles bishop d6 c4 and only when they play c4 we know to play c6 on b3 we know to play uh queen e7 to stop that kind of trade but on this one they play bishop f4 after bishop captures here and then castles the text notes that we have an important juncture here the main continuation is e3 and this is makes sense, solidifying this. Maybe we'll put our knight in here, and maybe we'll play on the queen side. But we do have this g file open, so at least some king side possibilities. But the pawn structure is kind of leading this way. Okay, so e3. And uh, now after knight bd7, knight bd2, knight e4, White can choose between b4, he can choose rook c1, queen c2, or knight captures e4. First, we're going to take a look at knight e5. I'll move 9. So we're going to go back and we're going to look at this game. And this is game 18. Uh, it's Adrian Mikalchison versus Alexi Dreev. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, rating, Chuck. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be a bad battle, Gary Fang. And welcome, guys. You're in time for the lesson. Uh, Gary Fang, if you can switch the uh, title to... Uh, lesson time or Dutch defense lesson time. That'd be amazing. Thank you so much. Um, and we're doing a lesson, so welcome. Welcome, guys. If you happen to have to step out, here's a link to the YouTube. It'll be on there shortly. So we're going to go right into the game. All right, so D4, D5, C4. E6. So different different move order. Really nice. G3 playing uh, kind of like Catalan almost. Uh, C6. Bishop G2. And this is actually surprising. Uh, but wow. This is really surprising. Just F5. <laughs> I like that. I like that move order. 
Thank you so much for following. I really appreciate it. Jin the Bin, what's up? How's everything? All right, Knight of Three, Knight of Six. This is uh, a nice move order that starts off in the Catalan, but then reaches a Stonewall Dutch defense. Very nice. So we're going to play Bish the Castle, Bishop G6, Bishop F4. If there's a drawback to Black's Bishop development to D6, this is most probably it. This is it. Here, and six. So they're saying, logically weakening White's pawn structure as compensation for the exchange of the dark square bishops. As we can see, our dark square bishop is very, very important because of this square, right? Now we have a whole bunch of holes, dark square weaknesses in our position. When we had the dark square bishop, it's fine. We can control that. But now you can see that these two pawns control these holes. This controls that. His knight is well placed. So, although white structure is compromised, it has an effective grip on the center. This pawn structure is also going to be part of the next lesson, so be tuned for that. So, there are some things that uh, you should note about this, that there is no F4. Usually, when we're playing the Stonewall Dutch, there would be an F4 break. But now, since there's a pawn on f4, there is no f4. The e5 advance can no longer be here. And it is even more likely than in the quieter lines that black should seek his chances on the king side and white on the queen side. So they're saying, we should play on the king side. We should play over here. And while white should play over here. And we've seen this. And they, they're saying that some of these games actually look like a game of Othello instead of uh, a game of chess. And actually, I'm really bad at the game of Othello. So if, if you have any Othello masters, uh, shout out to you guys. So, indeed, the standard strategy is to transfer the bishop to h5. So this is the old strategy. And it's saying that we should do that. And then our knights to e5 and d7. And we're going to also tuck the king away to h8 and open the g file. So this is our plan. And obviously, white has to kind of not let us do that. GM Hikaru Nakamura, what? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jesse, everybody, you're in time for the lesson. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesse. Thank you. <laughs> Your arrows. Have a great stream. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, 493. It's like, ah, welcome, everybody who came into the stream. And for those of you on YouTube, I'm uh, screaming like a little girl because, uh, I just received a massive raid. So thank you. Thank you all for following. And you're in time for the uh, for the lesson. Uh, reasonable. Yes, this is true. New viewer who this. <laughs> uh, my name is Japanese Tutor. I teach chess. And uh, you're in part of a lesson. So go to the YouTube. I have a whole bunch of lessons so you guys can get better at chess. Hurry up and put more arrows. I will put more arrows. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's amazing. I have to... Okay, great. So, 95. This is the move 995. Wow, thank you all for the follows. Thank you so much for all the follows. I really appreciate it. So, 95. This move and also knight BD2 will usually transpose somewhere. Um, sometimes they play knight bd2 first, and then they'll play here so that they can play knight f3. Um, or after this. We, we know this main maneuvers. We've seen this before. 
Okay, so we're gonna play knight bd7, e3. Okay, and this position could just as well have arisen from the more common move order e3, knight bd7, and e5. But uh, now we're gonna play knight e4. This is the best move in this position. This is what they're saying. This is the best move. And some inferior options are queen e7. Um, you could also play knight catches on e5, but why would you do that? It's it's pretty instructive because... Hold on. e5. And then this d-pawn takes... Not the e-pawn, but the d-pawn. The d-pawn takes because if we, if we take with... Uh, this pawn now we have our plan our plan we don't want to allow black to do that and then boom this is much better for white and they're saying that after 94 b4 taking the advantage and you have to worry about the nature street squares right you can't go anywhere so you really have to consider What's happening here? I mean, you, you know, a5. You got to really be careful. F3, we have uh, D capture C4 as well. So takes, takes, takes. And we've got like two pawns for the piece. Cons uh, I'll ban this guy. Thank you so much for all the follows. F Twilight, what's up? What is up? I, I got him. <laughs> yeah, I just received the massive raid. So thank you for that. So they're saying that white's um, a lot better here. So got to make sure not to play knight capture z4. Or knight capture z5, rather. Sorry. Okay, so e3, knight e4, and knight d2. To avoid exchange of all the knights, White may try to chase away the knight on e4 by playing f3 first. Or maybe queen c2, queen e7, then f3. Uh, right now we're just going through this line, and we'll talk about this in later videos as well. So knight captures e5. Here. <laughs> the, only here. Okay, guys? Only here. Because we do have a cop out if they try to play here, right? Because we can take the knight now. Um, and D captures e5. And obviously, we'll go after if F captures e5, we're gonna do this, this, and then um, we've seen this idea in a, in a lot of uh games, but f4 because if e captures f4, then we have here. And if you guys remember this, I think this was two videos ago where we explored this option. And right now our bishop is stuck, but hello, we're gonna get we're gonna get somewhere. And I think uh, black is doing just fine here. This is why you don't take with the F pawn. This is why you take with the D pawn. So they have a question in the text. Are there any guidelines for how to recapture after a knight exchange on e4 or e5? After, and this is the answer, after a knight exchange on e4, black usually responds f captures e4, vacating f5. Okay. The, so, after exchanging the knight on e4, we usually play, oops, okay, let's say we, we whatever. Let's say we do this. Let's say we play here. The usual reply is to take F, vacating F5, and then we'll try to put something on F5, or it'll be a leverage point. That's what the uh, text is saying. Okay. Beep. Z5. Okay, that's where we're at right now. Okay. A knight exchange on e5 can result in two different pawn structures. If white recaptures with the f pawn, black often gets the opportunity to push f4 immediately. And we always have to look for this f4 push. That's one of our plans, one of our main plans. Uh, sometimes temporarily sacrificing a pawn. 
recapturing with the D pawn is usually better. And it's called the, and I'm sorry, I'm probably going to butcher this name, Belyavsky style, is usually better. This vacates the D4 square for white's remaining knight. So one plan maybe might be here and here, where the knight sits pretty here. So, bishop d7. The redeployment of the light square bishop to h5 is one of the black's original plans. Remember, we talked about this in a long time ago in our videos. And also, guys, if I'm talking to my videos a lot, but they're on my YouTube and they're below every single video that has to do with the Dutch. They're, it's all one big playlist. So, bishop d7, queen e2. Knight captures d2. And this is exclamation mark. Queen captures d2 and bishop e8. C captures d5 with, with a question mark and uh, exclamation mark after it. It's interesting, I guess. But it's hard to say what white achieves with his capture. Placing a rook on the c file seems more flexible. So C captures d5. E Captures d5 is also playable, but I guess this is more concrete. Rook fc1. Playing the other rook here because there's no future for the rook over here. So this is the only line. And maybe having this rook be an anchor and playing over here. And now bishop c6. Flexibility is... Flexibility of the mind is key. Black blocks the c-file and covers b7. And the long diagonal may well become useful in the attack if black succeeds in creating pressure down the g-file. Thank you so much for gifting us a sub. Wow, thank you so much, Debunk. Storm, thank you for being here. Wow, there's so many, so many people here. Thank you so much. Who's ready from GM Hikaru? Yeah. Is Bay here? Yeah, they were, she was here before. This line is too deep. Only high-level players know all this theory. Instructive points as you're going... Exactly. I'm, I'm taking what the book says, and I'm also giving my points and my experience and how I teach to kind of bring it all together. I know chess can be very hard, especially when you have to study by yourself. This is why I'm, I'm doing this. I'm giving you free lessons online. So just to help the chess community out. I want the chess community to thrive and be bigger. Okay, we're going to go right here. This is a very natural move if you're able to forget that the bishop was on its way to eat h5. Thank you so much for following. And if you guys can or want to get better at chess, um, click the link that I just posted. Uh, it will take you right to the YouTube and you can uh, subscribe and put the notification out bell on. Thank you so much, Merlin. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, Harlem Knight, chess is very hard. Chess is hard. But, okay, so the point is, chess in itself isn't hard. Okay? Chess has a lot of small ideas that are very easy to learn. Once you do learn them, chess becomes a little bit simpler. But it's using all of those small ideas together, which is the hard part. You can get really good by understanding the small pieces of chess. Putting them together is, is the hard part. Okay, so again, b bishop c6 is a very natural move unless you're on that one track state of mind where you're like, oh, I just need to go h5. That's the plan. <sighs> but, you know, c6 is not open. <laughs> so go there. Okay, so let's go with the plan. So rook c5. Hindsight suggests that this natural move may be inaccurate. Maybe king h1 is better. Planning on the other rook to g1 or this rook to uh, g1. Okay, so king h8. b4. a6, stopping black's plan. a4. Rook g8. Remember, remember our plan. We're just trying to play king h8, put the rook on the g file, open up the g file, and win. That's our plan. <laughs> Play is fairly slow, 
and Black has all the time he needs to prepare on the G file. King H1. The king is starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable on the semi-open G file, but as we shall see, there is also danger on the long diagonal. Spicy. This is about to get spicy really soon, and I feel it. G5. Black's kingside play flows naturally and is strengthened by the fact that white's heavy artillery is occupied on the queen side. So you see, this looks like a very natural plan, but it's not doing anything, whereas we're actively creating threats. F captures G5. And they're saying that B5 actually loses to G captures F4. That's what they're saying. Because uh, B captures C6. Rook captures G2. King captures G2. F3. Well, I don't like this so much, but... I do like opening the G file. I think A captures B5 is just perfect. But okay. F captures G5. And we're going to do rook captures G5. F4 is a mistake. So rook captures G2. Queen captures G2. Did I skip through a whole bunch of moves? I might have, guys. I might have skipped through a whole bunch of moves. Just for talking so much. What move is this? This is this is uh, crazy. Every time I, that's what I say. Every time I blunder a fellow tactics. <laughs> what about the D four push earlier? Exactly. Let's let's do that. Okay. So you get D five. Let me just put the position that was up. Oh, he played Queen H four first. Sorry. I I totally missed Queen H four. Okay. So that's why it was bad. King H1. When he played King H1. So I'll move 20. King H1. They played H4. Sorry. And then I missed this A2 move. Protecting here. Sorry about that guys. I, I'm really sorry. So H4 rook A2. Now G5. And now they're saying. If this then this actually loses. That's what they were saying. If we take here, then rook captures g2 here, f3. If takes mate, if doesn't take, then uh, queen g4, queen h3 are mate. Right? There's no way to stop this. That's what they were saying. And I'm sorry for missing that move, guys. You're we probably super confused what I was talking about earlier. I was like, this isn't mate. <laughs> this is not mate. This is not a move. <laughs> So F captures G5, and then Rook captures G5. F4 says loses by force. Because of Rook captures G2. Here. Queen check. Queen G1. Picking up everything. And we're going to be up a few pawns. Very nice. I like this. And we're going to push this and we're going to have a very nice game. So how did you guys like that? Chess bots of Wales rating with a party of 10. Thank you so much. Everybody's showing me so much love. Wow. Yeah, B5 didn't make any sense. Now it does. When black was on E1. Oh. Q5 
queen g1. Queen captures b4 might be the best move. If d4 here, rook captures c6 it just looks like it's a saving grace. Right? Whoa. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, but that game was over. Definitely the saving grace. Yeah, first time viewer. Well, welcome. Welcome. Raider Reno. What's my ELO? Funky Shark, my ELO is 1860. 1860. But I haven't played a tournament in a few years, so maybe it's lower, maybe it's higher. Who knows? And Brian, welcome. And guys, if you want to get your chess better and you want to learn chess for free, go ahead and go to the YouTube. If you would like to join a, my family here, uh, the chess squad or the chess masters in training, get on the Discord. And thank you so much, guys. And also remember that if you do have Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime, another way to support a streamer is by using uh, your free uh, subscription on, on your favorite streamer, which is, uh, yeah, that's him. <laughs> All right, let's go into game 19. Okay, so let's play here. Okay, so this is game 19. This is by Mark Narcisco Dublin versus Victor Mosalenko. This that game was really instructive as well. So d4, e6, c4, f5, g3. And I like this move a lot. Right? Because you can play whatever. You can play like the French defense. You can it's very flexible. You're not telling your opponent what you want to do. You know, you can play this, you can play this, you can play this. There's so many moves here. So you can even play knight of six. It's so flexible. So I really like that. But anyways, back to it. G3, knight of six, bishop g2, c6, knight of three. D5, castles. Castles, and then we have bishop D6. Bishop F4, and we're going to go over this line again. Castles. Given white's weakened king side, black may also tr try uh, toying with uh, the delayed castle. But, whatever. I, I this is in my experience this is really really nice if they do play the bishop at four lines just castling immediately you already know your plans right <laughs> you know your plans but maybe you can even play this and you don't have to castle but that's dangerous it's a little bit too spicy for me uh okay so queen b3 and white makes the development of black's light squared bishop harder and may delay e3 in order to leave the queen on the third rank open for the queen. Okay, nice. This, bam, 94. This is not strictly speaking a development move, but it's very flexible as black should almost certainly play it at some stage. The main line, knight bd7, so not this move, but instead knight bd7 uh, can be also played. Okay, you can also play queen b6, but the queen is somewhat misplaced on b6. White is just going to play queen c2, and now your queen kind of looks uh, a little dumb, <laughs> to say the least. Okay, so but what's important is you play knight e4 and queen a3. Which is an interesting move, but um, white fights for the dark squares, but we doubt this decentralization of the queen can be the, really his best try. So the move we play here is b5. Mosalenko points out that this idea is typical for the che Chebanenko uh, variation of the Slav defense. 
So he's using ideas from another opening and it looks similar. So he's like, okay, this might work here as well. So C captures D5, C captures D5, Knight E5, Queen B6 now, and then Queen E3. This makes a somewhat artificial impression that, but applies some pressure on the backwards e pawn. Knight d7, knight d3, b4. Black opens the a6 f1 diagonal for his like square bishop. f3, where's the knight gonna go? Maybe here. This thing is the only move, right? Knight e to f6. c6 is very accurate move order. Yeah. We only play c6 when they play c4. C yeah, so c you only play c6 when they play d4. Where can we find annotated games? If you guys want... Um, I mean, the, I guess what I'm doing is annotating these games verbally, um, but just, I guess, buy a book. <laughs> I am, I am. Zapion, what's up? The Diamond Dutch is, no, no, uh, that is not, that is not the name. I'll leave the book in the, uh, I'll give you the link to the book after this. Okay. So, Knight D7, Knight D... So knight of knight of six a three, b captures a three, rook captures a three, bishop a six, attacking on this line, and now they're gonna play knight c three, knight c three, bishop captures d three, and knight a four, first. Queen d6. And rook captures d3. Wow, that's interesting. Because maybe my knight wants to end up over here. But that's, that's a nice maneuver. Rook fc8. Okay, so let's go over what's happening in this position. Uh, this knight wants to get over here. This rook is probably going to come over here, and I'm going to come over here. And try to really put this knight here. This bishop is a little suspicious. It's not doing anything. And we traded off our bad light square bishop. Because our central pawns were on light squares. That means that our bishop doesn't have free movement. And it's a bad bishop. It was kind of locked inside of its own pawns. So we were able to trade off that bad bishop. For their knight, which the knight is very good because it can jump to other squares. Like these two squares. Okay. So, this is actually really, really um, amazing stuff here. Not only for the Stonewall Dutch defense, but try to take the lessons of why they're putting their pieces where they're putting them. And... Apply it to your game. Maybe you're never going to play the Dutch. But draw the ideas from all the openings. Okay. So, queen d2. Knight b6. And now this... Yeah. Knight c5 works, but... Eh. And then, bam, queen b6. Slightly atypical. Black has an advantage on the queen side. Wow, thank you so much for the cheer. I really appreciate it. So your knights in this case are, are valued highly. Yeah. Because the bishops don't really do anything in closed positions. Where that's where the knights strive. All right. So, let's go. And they're saying that white's biggest problem is the poor bishop over here. And they're saying black actually has, unlike most 
uh, Stonewall Duchess, black actually has an advantage on the queen side. That's what happens. All right, so rook a1. Rook a to b8, attacking the pawn. Rook c3. Rook c4. This more or less forces an exchange, which is favorable for black. Rook captures c4, rook captures c4. Let, let's go, let's say they play a, e3. Then queen captures b2, right? And we just went upon. So more or less, it takes that, takes that. And now our knight has an amazing square. Uh, rook a2, protecting the pawn. And knight d5, obviously. This is really good. Knight d5. If they play e4, obviously we're going to play knight b4, so this is going to be really easy. So bishop f1. Maybe trying to play e4 anyways. Queen b3. Attacking the rook. Captures a7. Thank you so much for the cheer. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and rook captures a7 queen captures b2 queen captures b2 rook captures b2 and the opponent actually makes a mistake here rook a check which is a mistake that a lot of us beginners make why why check the rook is just doing fine here why check? Maybe you want to play here behind the pawn? Maybe, but there are other and better options. Even e4 is good. But, again, check. We don't know what he was thinking at the time. King f7. Rook c8. Yeah, so he was going for that plan. Rook c2. Now protecting the pawn. Material is roughly equal, but there can hardly be any doubt that black is now has a winning position. Not only has he got a dangerous pass pawn and some concrete threats, but his knight is clearly superior to white's virtually powerless bishop. So e4, ninety-three, also threatening this, so we have to be careful. Ninety-three, bishop h3. c3 okay c3 is very nice d5 i guess they're trying to create a pass pawn of their own e captures d5 e captures d5 rook b2 um and remember they can't take here because we're going to play check and then check right so uh let's say they take they only have one place to move. They can't go here. They can't, or they can play here. But we're gonna take with the rook, right? Take here. Check. Bam. Thanks for the free piece. Okay. So rook b two, which they don't explain in the book, <laughs> but it's okay. Tactics. So we should be three, b two, uh, rook c seven. Check. King e8, d6, c2, rook c8 check, king d7, c3, and rook b1 check wins the house. What about my goal yesterday? It, it didn't happen, unfortunately. But, um, guys... You can see that the stone wall is actually really and super dynamic. That that bishop f4 is something you don't have to really worry about. You know, if you want a slow game, maybe the Dutch stone wall isn't for you because this can actually be tactical, right? So you want to keep that momentum kind of going and take all of the chances. You know, if they're not playing where they need to play, you play there. You take an advantage where they're supposed to get an advantage. Then you go to your other side. And that's how um, 
I like to play um, positions against weaker players. I'll I know what their plans are in their openings, and if they don't go for it, then I can punish them by just doing it myself. Yeah. So that's it for my video on here. Guys, if you liked it or learned something, consider subscribing and liking the video. It really helps me out. Make sure you hit the notification bell. But that's it for uh, today, and uh, have a great day, and keep Stonewall touching.